I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. When I talk to hobbyists, one of their favorite things is big fish, big tangs, big angels, even big parrotfish like the koyois, or however you pronounce their name. These are fish that make a statement, kind of like raised trucks and jeeps with big mud tires that are always sparkly clean that never leave the pavement. But I digress. Don't get me wrong. Big fish are an important part of having a big aquarium and they play important roles in your tank. Tangs are gonna eat algae, angels are gonna nip at rocks, eat algae, sponges, and hopefully not your corals. And if I had a big tank without any big fish in it, it would look empty. For example, if I had my 12 foot tank here and didn't have any big boys, it would look kind of empty and in a way like, why do I have this big tank without any big fish? At the same time, the little guys also play an important role and they're often overlooked. See, picking big fish is easy. Anyone can do that finding the small guys to fill in with your stocking strategy and also provide important roles in your tank, that's something that takes patience and some insights. So today we're gonna to talk about big fish versus small fish, where each are important and how I approach stocking a tank with both of them. I buy small size versions of large fish. Part of the fun is watching small versions of big fish grow up in your tank. Here's my white fin tank. I bought it small because I knew it would get big and I wanted to see it grow. Years later, it's still not fully grown, but it's a lot bigger than it was. I really enjoyed watching this guy grow up. I recently repeated the process and purchased another big future fish with his Dusimer tank. I purposely chose a small one because I wanted to see him grow and let him grow into the tank. This approach takes time and patience to wait it out, but it's completely worth it. Even if you're going to play the long game and buy a small version of a big fish, don't buy into the mentality that, hey, I'm gonna buy a small one, put it in too small of a tank for when it gets too big, but as it grows, I'll just rehome the thing or I'll get a bigger tank. Most of the time, this doesn't happen because something comes up. Little Johnny broke its leg, you decided you wanted to go on vacation. And look, how many people will put off testing their tank because they don't have time? but you're gonna have time to set up a new tank or tear apart your tank and find an appropriate home for this small fish that's now gotten big. Just not a fan of that strategy. Buy a fish that's gonna be appropriately sized for your tank when it gets to be an adult, then buy it small and let it grow into your tank so that you can enjoy it long term. Make sure you have adequate filtration in place to handle their bio load. Big fish eat a lot and therefore produce a lot of waste. Your filtration has to be able to handle the bio load and no water changes alone won't get that done. Big fish don't work for everyone because not everyone has a big tank. Most hobbyists are 120 gallons and less, which massively whittles down the list of appropriate, quote, big fish. So big fish have their place, but not in small tanks, even if it's young and therefore a small big fish. It's much easier to find small fish for saltwater tanks because there are so many appropriate small fish no one's ever gonna tell you, you can't put that goby in that 200 gallon tank, it'll get too big. Doesn't happen. But you can put too small of a fish in too big of a tank. For example, pico fish, small, small gobies, like this tiger goby. This guy is tiny, maybe an inch fully grown. I put it in my 1,000 gallon reef, or even in a 200, 175 gallon tank, you're never gonna see the fish. He's simply too small. For those pico fish, Pico tanks are a great match for them. So we do want small, but we don't want too small. We want just right. Small fish can play a big role in your tank. They fill in gaps in your tank's stocking strategy. They add a burst of color like these anthias. You can't put a school of tanks in your tank to produce this kind of color and motion. Small fish, small bio load, which means you can have more of them. And there's lots of small fish that are appropriate for reef tanks. Then there's the joys of finding the reclusive little fish, the ones that you don't see every day. Ones where you're looking at this section of your tank, they happen to swim into your field of view and you're like, oh, there it is. And you grab your camera and you take a picture of them. There's no big fish that build a burrow and live in it their whole lives. There's no big fish shrimp symbiotic relationships like gobies and shrimps. All these things are cool things, cool unique things that little guys bring to the table. There's so much personality and uniqueness of a small fish in a saltwater tank. And a saltwater tank that's well stocked with small fish tells me something about the hobbyists. They know their fish and they're willing to stock in unique ways. Now, 
Don't get me wrong, I love the big fish in my tank. I've got some big boys in here. They bring their own set of personality to the table. But it's the little guys that, they're not very big, but they bring something, they steal the show. You don't see them all the time. You just go, mm, yeah, okay, I see the big one, but look at this cool little dude down here. So I like the big boys when it's appropriate for the size tank, but as you're thinking about stocking your tank, don't forget about the little ones because we've got lots of choices. Lots of them are appropriate for lots of saltwater tanks and they're probably gonna steal the show in your tank. I'm Mark Callan, Mr. Saltwater Tank. Come and tell me half of saltwateraquarium.com. Till next time, enjoy your tanks and happy stocking.